All right, here's what you do. All right, here's a little rendition of a cross section of a flute. You've measured from the inner wall one bore diameter for the center center point of that embouchure hole. You've made it about half bore diameter wide, generally. Now you've gotten a hole and you, you've done it good. All right. Now this hole, you got it big enough. You don't want to get it any bigger, but you still haven't gotten it to the correct tuning. It needs to go up a little bit more. Take off diagonally from the inner surface uh, um, towards the embouchure this way. That, in effect, makes the, the hole creep up more towards the top of the flute. And you'll still be able to get that higher note. Now, here you can see this. When you overblow into the next octave, all right, Remember one post ago in the blog where we talk about the physics of what goes on inertially inside here and the uh, expansions and contractions and, and the, uh, the hertz frequencies and everything? Please check that out. Be sure. If you get the note correct and you overblow into the next octave and it's still not high enough in that octave, do the same thing but from this side. Do you understand? Because when you're doubling the octave, when you're doubling the frequency of what's going on inside the physics of the flute here, the uh, expansions and contractions are coming the other way now that you've dumbled all the little packets of of uh, motions inside the flute so for the second octave you want to take off from this side that way you don't have to expand the hole too big on the outside surface of the flute do you understand me so far? okay now once you get that all done we can move on to the next step here we go All right, now, I'm not quite sure why I said next step. I should say next bit of information. That's pretty much all the steps you need to do. You know everything, pretty much how to make the, uh, where to put the holes, how to finally tune the holes. There's more information that I should mention right now, and there's other information that you need to know that isn't in the videos. They're in the text of the posts on the blog, so please come and visit. You'll find the link to today's blog post in the video description. Please come on by. Now, some interesting points that you should know. While the um, mathematical formula to find the fingering hole placements pretty much govern exactly where along the column of air you need to place them, you do also have the freedom, however, to put these holes anywhere around the barrel of the flute. That's very important, and I'll tell you why. I mean, you can make a finger hole into a thumb hole if you want. But um, if you're going to make them, make your flutes big and a little too far to reach some fingers on the, on the holes, you can put them off to the side for your smaller fingers. You see what I'm saying here? Okay. Now, um, for instance... Like in the video I mentioned earlier in this video, or the last part of the part one of this video set, um, the big, huge bamboo, bass bamboo flute that I uh, put another YouTube on, video on, like, I don't know, like a year ago, um, I had to make fingering keys to reach the holes, okay? But the fingering keys were in the way of other holes that I could actually finger, which also had to be offline, so I had to make everything off. A straight line so we've got like this little configuration right here you can see that and this right here so yeah um, keep in mind that one bit of freedom you have again while the math governs where along the column the holes need to be you can put them anywhere around the circumference of the barrel that you should so decide very important um, now, that's pretty much all the basics. Again, there's not all of the information you need strictly in the videos come to the posts. You'll see more information in the texts, okay? There is the um, table for when whichever root note you decide your flute should be. You'll need to know what notes the fingering holes need to be. That's in today's post. Um, also, for tuning things chromatically, uh, you can either... Uh, check out the link where to get these for real cheap or you can use the free software program that's linked to in the blog post and you just download that for free you use your computer you can play pretty much any instrument in front of your computer and it will hear the sound and tell you 
how close or how precise that note is. Use that. Remember, precise tuning is important. Um, other than that, uh, all I can say is, um, you know, build one. Tell me how you did. Um, comment on the blog, please. You know, uh, I'm no genius and I don't pretend to be. I'm about as sharp as a bag of wet mice. I might just learn something from you. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, if you do comment, I hope you're not one of those people that just say something totally vapid like, wow, dude, nice blog. I'm just, just not going to delete that. And don't, with no apology, don't be mad. But, you know, uh, got something to say, say it, you know, uh, contribute, you know, uh, let's make this into a happy little community on this website. Um, share some knowledge. Uh, next week, next week we're going to be uh, making the 19, 19, I think it's 19, yeah, 19 piece chromatic set of tubular drums. Oh, would that be fun? Um, that's all for today. Thanks again for visiting rockfreakandsolid.com or whatever video platform you're on, probably YouTube. Um, see you next week.